everybody, John from thecommandzone.com here. I've uh, got another deck tech video for you, another episode here. Uh, this is uh, Glissa, we're bringing her back. Um, I had a Glissa video before, about a year and a half ago. You might have seen it. If not, check it out. Um, but this is a new build of Glissa, and I decided to make a new one just because the last video was actually really popular and a lot of people like it. Um, so I rebuilt Glissa in a different way. And um, my previous Glissa deck was more combo based. Um, it was pretty much a ramp style deck into a Genesis Wave or some kind of Nim Death Mantle combo. Uh, whereas this one is just an attrition based control deck. It's heavy control. It's going to take a long time to win. Um, the win conditions aren't really that prevalent. Um, but what you're going to do is be able to attrition out your opponents. And from there you will get to win um, after you know, a kind of drawn out game. Uh, I decided to build a deck like that just because I think that's what Gliss is asking for. Gliss is asking for some kind of... Uh, artifact based resurrection deck or some some deck that uh, uses it or abuses the graveyard so that's what I've done this time there's nothing crazy in this deck it's just a nice strong efficient control deck so let's let's take a look let's get Glissa out of the way here right there I think that's good and we'll start with the uh, with the duels we have I'm sorry not the fetches we have Misty Rainforest, Pluto Delta, Windswept Heath, Wooded Foothills, Verdant Catacombs, and uh, Blundstade Mire. After that, we have some of the big lands here, I like to call them. Uh, we've got Mosswort Bridge. Mosswort Bridge is, you know, pretty good in green. Um, especially in a control deck, we're going to be able to pop out maybe a Mind Slave or a Ruin Scar Demon, or something like that. Something that costs just a, you know, a lot of mana we can surprise our opponents with. Uh, Mosswort Bridge is a pretty good inclusion in any deck. Alright, next. we got the couple. we got got... Uh, Cabal Coffers and Urborg, uh, Tomb of Yagmoth. Uh, these two car these two lands are really good. Unfortunately, with the banning of Primeval Titan, they got a little bit worse because um, I can't get them both at the same time. But um, I've, I've kind of built this deck to have a lot of tutors in it. Um, so really, the deck will, will function the same every time. There's not very much variance in this deck. It's gonna it's gonna have a lot of the same cards come out um, at the same uh, time in the game, just because of the way that the the draws work. And that's really what we're looking for in a control deck. We want we want something that's always gonna have you know. Uh, the same output every game. We don't we don't really want to have too much uh, variation in our draws. We want them all to kind of be the same. Um, and the last big land is uh, Gaius Cradle. Gaius Cradle is really nice. Uh, anytime you have cre creatures in your deck, run Gaius Cradle if you can afford one. They're, it's, it's a great land. Um, so we want to put one of those in the deck. Alright, next uh, to the uh, more like... Uh, uh, they're, they're all colorless lands. I have seven of them in the deck. I usually recommend not too many colorless lands. But we do run seven, um, or I'm sorry, 37 lands, plus a, a ton of uh, ramp and all this kind of stuff. So I, I think the the colorless lands that we do run here are are perfectly fine. They're worthwhile. So we should keep them in the deck. We have first uh, we have Maze of Ith. Can't go wrong with Maze of Ith. We have a new one. I I'm trying this one out. Uh, Grim Backwoods. I think it's pretty good. Uh, four to draw one card is quite a bit. But my deck doesn't mind sacrificing creatures, so. It's kind of a fringe thing you can do if you really need one card or whatever, or if you want to skull clamp something out and you have no other sack outlets. Um, Grim Backwoods is fine. Now this deck does run a lot of sack outlets uh, because we do want to, you know, we, we do want to sacrifice our our, uh, our permanence and hopefully get some benefit out of that. Uh, next is a uh, Frixian Tower, another sack outlet for us. Um, we should run Frixian Tower. It's a very, it's a very good land in black, so I suggest Frixian Tower. We have Volras Stronghold, another really good one. Uh, we have Ancient Tomb, because why not? And then we have two of the nice lands I really enjoy playing. We have Strip Mine and Wasteland. Now, these two are really important in this deck, um, just because we have the Crucible, Life from the Loam combo. We, we run Oracle of Moldiah. We run Azusa. We run all these cards that just make these two very broken. Um, so this is one of the ways that we're going to control the game, and it's by just destroying all of our opponent's permanents, mainly their lands. We want to get rid of as many lands as possible, keep them off their big spells, so that we can resolve our own spells. Um, so those two are very important. All right, let's get rid of those lands. And we've got some more lands. Um, these are all my duels. We have uh, Command Tower, City of Brass, Lanoir Wastes, Reflecting Pool, uh, Gemstone Mine. Gemstone's Mine isn't one I usually run, but because we do have all this graveyard recursion, um, I decided that it's fine. Uh, we have the Bayou, the Big Bayou, Twilight Mire, and a nice Urborg. I'm sorry, Overgrown Tomb, not Overboard. So that's it for the lands. Oh, sorry, no, that's not it for the lands. Jeez, I'm getting ahead of myself here, guys. 
Uh, we have the basics. How can you forget about basics, right? You need basics in a deck, man. We have uh, six swamps, and we have uh, five forests. The only reason I run more swamps than forest is because I have quite a few duels, I have all the fetches, and I have um, a few spells in the deck that do cost um, triple black. So I want to make sure that I can cast those triple black spells. Um, and for that reason, I run uh, one more swamp than I do force. All right, let's go. Let's see. What are we going to next? Let us go to some of our ramp. Let's go to our ramp again. Why not? Well, let's start with the artifact ramp. Uh, we have Mindstone. Mindstone's really good with Glissa. You can sacrifice it, pay the one, draw a card, put it on the stack, put it right back in your hand. Mindstone's pretty good. Very good in this deck. Uh, we have Golgari Signet. Coalition Relic. We have Mana Vault, Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, and Sculpting Steel, and the last one is a Thran Dynamo. Um, I think the Sculpting Steel might become a Gilded Lotus, not sure yet, um, just got to keep playtesting and, and see what I like better. But Sculpting Steel has quite a few applications, um, so it's, it should stay in the deck, I actually like that card a lot. Off to the Colored Mana Ramp, we got Sky Shroud Claim. Cultivate, Wood Elves, Sakura Tribelder, Oracle Moldaya, Azusa, and Garuk Wildspeaker. Um, that rounds out most of the ramp in the deck. There is quite a bit, as you can see. We play 37 lands and then a lot of ramp, but I think ramp is extremely important in green. It's very, very important in control, and you really need to have it in your deck. Um, so make sure you have enough ramp in your decks, guys, because it's really important. Uh, next, what should we get to next? Let's see. Let's see. Why don't we get to some artifacts here? Let's do some artifacts. Just a couple. Uh, we have Mind Slaver. Very good. It's the uh, you know the husband or the wife to Glissa. Actually, it'd probably be the husband, right? So we'll uh, we'll stick them right there. Mind Slaver Glissa. You know, a great combo. Great great couple together. We have uh, Sword of Light and Shadow. It's the only sword I run in this deck. It's not the greatest sword. Um, it doesn't have uh, protection from the best colors. Uh, but it works well with the graveyard, and a lot of our guys are going to be in the graveyard. They're going to end up there. Um, so I would like to be able to recur them every turn, and that's what uh, Sword of Light and Shadow will do for us. So I put that in the deck. Next one, Skull Clamp, everyone's favorite. Can't get away from it. you got to play it. We have a Mimicvat. Mimicvat is very good. Um, it's going to allow all of our creatures that die and all of our opponent's creatures that die to get more efficient and, you know, come back under our control. So that's pretty good. Uh, we have Crucible of Worlds. That's a very nice one. Got to have it. We have Altar of Dementia. Um, this one is an interesting card. More more than more so than not, it's going to mill my it's going to mill my graveyard um, to put more artifacts in there. And uh, we have a lot of graveyard recursion, so it's really not a problem to put stuff in our own graveyard. Um, but if we have to, we can we can Altar of Dementia our opponents as well. Um, so it works both ways, depending on, on what we need at the time. But I think most of the time, it will um, it will be our graveyard that is milled. Okay, last, um, in this section of the artifacts is Nile Spellbomb. Another graveyard uh, hate card. Very important to have at least one or two graveyard hate cards in your deck. Um, we have Nile Spellbomb. I don't run any others currently. But I, I think this card is, is good enough. Uh, and and Glissa, we, we get to use it a million times over with Glissa, So it's really, really good. Okay. Let us get to some of the other creatures in the deck. Um, we have Genesis, just to go with that theme of uh, Graveyard Recursion. So Genesis is in there. We have Duplicant, a very, very solid creature. He's just really good. Um, he came out in the new Commander's Arsenal set, so go pick that up if you can. I know Wizards like just screwed everybody out of that. Um, but try and get one if you can. They're not very expensive, so you can get one. Next, we've got Worm Coil Engine. He's solid. Um, Worm Coil Engine works very well with this guy right here, uh, Agent of Bolas. Agent of Bolas is unique in black because he allows us to gain life without paying life. So I like him as a card, and he's pretty good in the deck, I think. Uh, next, another one that works well with Agent of Bolas is Machaeus. He's a new one. He's one of my triple black spells. I'm testing him out. Uh, we're seeing how he works. But I think he's pretty good because we do have a lot, quite a few sacrifice uh, effects and sack outlets in the deck. So... Um, McCase is going to bring back our own guys, so I, I think it's pretty good. I, I like him a lot. Um, another one, Sheldred. Can't get away from him. He's going to help us recur some of our guys. Uh, we have Harvester of Souls. 
This is one of my new favorite creatures. I love this guy. Addison Restored. He's so good. I mean, we're playing Wrath Effects. Our opponents are playing Wrath Effects. We're doing all kinds of crazy stuff on board. And Harvester of Souls is just going to let us draw a lot of cards. I mean, a ton of cards. So, if you're looking for a black creature that draws, Harvester of Souls is, is the guy. Like, there, there is no card that compares to Harvester of Souls, I don't think, in black. It's really, really good. Um, Grizzlebrand's out, so Harvester of Souls is the man. you got to play him. He's really good. All right. Enough about him. we got Solemn, um, a staple artifact, so we don't have to talk about that guy. And last, uh, Junk Diver. Junk Diver brings back uh, more artifacts from our bin. He gets put under with Skull Clamp. All kinds of good stuff. Bada bing. There it is. All right, here we go. Let's see. What do we got next? We have some of the uh, some removal and some wrath effects. So we got the big disc. I don't know if that's a squid or something. What is that in his hand? I don't know. Neverals. I don't know what it is, but it looks kind of interesting. So it's uh, it's Neverals disc. It gets rid of all the permanents on board. We like that. Uh, we got a Maelstrom Pulse for fun. We got a Damnation because he does a good job. We got Degree of Pain, which kind of draws us a bunch of cards. Another good black draw spell. Get as many of those as you can in your deck. Um, black needs it. So does a red and other colors, but black needs it a lot. Anyway, all is dust. Another good one. We got PDD. That's what I like to call him. PDD. Pernicious Deed. We have, uh, geez, Grave Pack. There he is. Uh, whenever you sac whenever a creature goes into the bin under your control, your opponents also sacrifice a creature. Very good. Allows us to uh, do all kinds of fun things in the deck. Um, we got Beast Within. I think it's the best green re green removal spell ever made by Wizards. Um, for three, who cares about the Beast? It doesn't matter. You can kill anything. A land, a planeswalker, a creature, an enchantment, artifact, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's going to die to Beast Within. And it's, it's really good. we got to play it. So we have it. Um, last is Ex Executioner's Capsule. And Executioner's Capsule uh, basically says, pay one and a black, destroy a non-black creature. Um, so that's really good with Lissa. You can also stack triggers with that, of course. Um, so you can, kill it. you can kill a guy, bring it back to your hand, kill another guy. All you need is three mana. It's quite a bit, but I mean, a three mana removal spell that like, keeps coming back is, uh, is what you're looking for in this deck. Um, so, so really, like, maybe... Uh, to a certain extent, the um, the card uh, the card power levels are not that high in the deck, um, but because you can use them over and over and over again, they become more powerful. So that's what we're looking for. Um, let's get to some tutors here. We have Ruin Scar Demon, another really really good tutor. Uh, we have E Witness. This is one of our graveyard tutors. We have Demonic Tutor, Worldly Tutor, Beseech the Queen, Buried Alive. Vampiric Tutor, Cruel Tutor, Crop Rotation, Survival of the Fittest, and Fierce Empath. Uh, those are a lot of tutors. They round out the deck. They help make all of our... Um, they help remove, I guess, the variance from our draws, which is really what we need. Um, a couple combo pieces here, and some Miser cards. We have uh, Reassembling Skeleton. Really good card in this deck. Um, he goes under with Skull Clamp. We can sack him, bring him back, do all kinds of crazy stuff. He's very good. Uh, same with the Bloodgast. These two guys will probably be the targets of our Buried Alive, or at least one of them will be. Um, but they're really, really good. They're very strong. And I suggest if you are playing Black and any kind of control deck, these two guys fit in very well. They have a lot of... Um, uh, what am I saying? They have a lot of unique abilities that, that can be used very well um, as resources. And they do work very well with cards like Contamination. Um, this is my Miser card. Uh, I don't play this very much. I try not to. People get really angry when you play Contamination. I don't know why, but they do. So, we don't want to play Contamination too much. I don't like pissing off my opponents. But, um, actually, I kind of do. But, anyway. Let's get to some uh, graveyard base cards. Some more graveyard stuff. We have a Regrowth. I'm trying um, Creeping Renaissance to see if it's good. It seems like it could be okay. Um, so, we're going to keep playing with it, and we're going to see how it does. But, I, I like it. Uh, we got a couple of reanimation spells. You gotta have a couple. So we got reanimate and we have victimize. Victimize is the shining, like a shining star in this deck. It's really good. Victimize is so good. Not many people play it, but it's it's ridiculous. I don't know how it got overlooked by a lot of people. It's an uncommon from Urza Saga. So uh, I don't know. Let let's sacrifice our Bloodgast and bring back you know Sheldred and whatever Machaeus or something like that. It's crazy. It's a very good card. Uh, we got Yagmas Will, obviously. 
and we have Life from the Loam to complement our Strip Mine, Wasteland, uh, Crucible, you know, Oracle, Azusa, all those cards. Okay, so that's almost it for the deck. I have a couple more spells here that we run. Um, just to round out the draw, we have Harmonize, um, Skeletal Scrying, which is another good one. We will have a lot of cards in our graveyard, so I, I don't think it really matters um, if we exile a few of them. And we have Sylvan Library. Um, so that's Glissa. Like I said, Glissa is a really good deck. It's a lot of fun. It's just a strong control deck if you're looking to play something. Um, that's just fun to play, you know, that you can have fun with and not really piss everybody off with some kind of stupid combo. Um, so anyway, uh, that's Glissa. That's the revamp of Glissa. Uh, come to thecommandzone.com. Check out more deck techs, more deck lists. We're trying to put up as many of them as we can. I'm doing it um, as much as I can. Next is hopefully Cranko if I can get the cards. I'm trying to source out all these stupid commons that are impossible to buy. Um, at my local stores. But anyway, so that's Glissa. Uh, please have fun with it, build it, talk about it, comment. Thank you. We'll see you next time.